Hey folks, it's Thomas and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Thomas. I am a fifth year astrophysics student at the University of St Andrews in Scotland. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of the textbooks that I've used over the last four years here at St Andrews and tell you a bit about why they're good, why I recommend them and why they will help you do better in your physics degree. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. First book I'm going to talk about today is Principles of Physics by Halliday, Resnick and Walker. This book is probably the bible of sub-honours physics, the first two years here in Scotland. It gives you a good grounding in just about every area of physics imaginable, and it's a brilliant introduction. It also covers a lot of the areas that you'll cover in more detail further into your degree, things like Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism and quantum mechanics and relativity. It'll go into a number of these areas, not super deep, not super mathsy, but so you can have a read and get a sort of taste for what's coming later in your degree. It doesn't cover everything you're going to see in those modules, by far not even close, but it's a really good introduction to the topic and it means that when you come to study those it's a good refresher of what am I going to be getting myself into here? What is a field? What's a scalar again? Um, quantum what now? Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a good thing to come back to when you're about to study something you've not looked at before, or you've not looked at in a while, and you just want to remind yourself of the, the basics, even if you're going to go a bit more in-depth. And it's a, it's a really well-written book. This is a really popular book for universities up and down the country. It's written in what I'd describe as normal English or plain English. It's not written really academically. When you're reading the book, you're trying to figure out the physics. Your, your brain is working on understanding the physics in the book, not what the authors have tried to say. It's written quite colloquially, it's not written in very formal language, and it's just quite an accessible read, to be honest. It's also really well illustrated. It's full of figures and diagrams, and for things like mechanical systems, being able to see what's going on in the system is quite often a really effective way of understanding the physics in a way that words aren't necessarily going to help you with. The other great strength this book has is loads of example problems. That's something you'll notice is a bit of a running theme in this video. The book is full of them. There are honestly pages of example problems. With 70 questions for something like motion in a straight line, that may well be more questions than you're given by your lecturer for the entire course you're doing. So make sure that if you've got this book, which I imagine quite a lot of you will because you're doing a physics degree, Make sure you utilise them. They're really good questions. They're, they're there to test you. Give it a go. And the other really important thing to remember with this is if you're struggling with a question in the book, you can go and ask your lecturers. Chances are they're going to be able to help you. And they're not just going to say, no, this isn't a question I set. I'm not going to help you with it. They're going to help. So definitely highly recommend that book. University is going to recommend it to you as well. If you're thinking about doing a physics degree, pick it up. You're probably going to need it and it's a great introduction to university level physics. If there's one thing that Principles of Physics doesn't really have, it's astrophysics. This is quite common in physics books because astrophysics is kind of separate. You get separate astronomy courses, so I understand it. So with that in mind, the next book I'm going to talk about is kind of Principles of Physics equivalent in astrophysics, and that is Astronomy, a Physical Perspective by Mark Kuttner. Now, as I said, I don't have my own copy of this, so I can't hold it up and be like, yes, this is mine. Because my university library had so many copies of this, I didn't feel I needed to. They also had an ebook version, which was great. Because they had so many options, I didn't really feel I could justify the cost of it. I mean, they had plenty of principles of physics, but when you're in a class of 140, those are going to be at the library pretty often. This book is great. It's kind of a crash course introduction to just about every major field in astronomy. From the properties of stars, through to stellar evolution, cosmology, the solar system, all sorts of things like that. And Honestly, I don't think I would have got quite as good a grade as I did in my first year astronomy courses without it. Like Principles of Physics, it's written in rather plain English. You're not sitting there thinking, what does this word mean? The book also isn't too maths heavy. The core bits of astronomy aren't really taxing mathematically. And where maths are included in the book, they're included where they need to be. They're included quite simply. And the book is full of examples. If they introduce a new equation, they're going to show you how to use it. And like Principles of Physics, this book has loads of practice questions, and I actually prefer the way that they did them in this book to the way they did them in Principles of Physics. In this book, you'll have three sections of questions in each chapter. Each chapter, not each big topic like stellar evolution, the chapters within the topics. They give you questions 
problems and computer problems. So the questions they give you are asking about the material in the chapter. They'd be written answers, it's not going to be mathematical. The problems ask you to use your math skills using the equations they've introduced in the chapter, and then your computer problems let you get hands-on with the principles using a computer. Computer problems are invaluable in astrophysics because everything uses code. You don't necessarily have to use code for all of these computer problems, but it gives you a chance to try out using code for them. I really like the way they presented the questions in these three different forms in this book, because I'm one of these people that learns best by using the knowledge. I'm not great just reading from a textbook and then ah, it's in there. I mean, it sort of works, but not as well as doing questions does. So I really like the way this book sets it up. I use this book a lot and would highly recommend. I got a great grade in my astronomy exam in first year, and I think a lot of it was down to doing a lot of the questions out of this book. So would recommend if that is a way that you learn. It's also just a really good book and really well written and I know I can say some more things to, about this book as I did about principles of physics. It's a really good introductory textbook for astronomy. I'm gonna move on now. The third book that I'm gonna talk about and recommend for you studying physics is Concepts in Thermal Physics by Blundell and Blundell. Now this has been recommended by every video I've ever seen that's done these sorts of videos because it's good. If Principles of Physics is the Bible for suborners physics, then Concepts in Thermal Physics is the Bible for thermal physics. Inside this relatively small book is just about every bit of thermal physics you're going to need for a university physics degree. It covers everything from Bose-Einstein condensates at the small end up to the th gas laws that govern interstellar molecular gas and dust clouds. It, it really covers the range. The knowledge in this book is applicable everywhere in physics and you're going to use it no matter what flavour of physics you're doing, whether it's experimental, theoretical or astrophysics. It's also one of those really rare textbooks at a higher level where you can both read it to learn it for the first time and understand it, but also dip in and out and pull out things when you just need to refer to the book. It's good for checking your concept, but it's also good for deep diving into the maths of how the thermal physics works. I don't really know how they've managed it, but it's really, really good. I used this book extensively in my third year thermal and statistical physics module. I found it far more accessible than the other resources that my lecturer had provided. And I still actually go back to this book quite often if I need to check a thermal physics concept. And thermal physics is a topic that every physicist or astrophysicist needs to know. It's applicable everywhere from the tiny, tiny cold Bose-Einstein condensates up to the massive energetic accretion disks around black holes. This book is what got me my good grounding in thermal physics with enough of a grasp to move on into the further years of my physics degree. If you've got a thermal physics module anywhere in your physics degree, which I guarantee you're going to have, get this book. My fourth book is another one that I don't have my own copy of because I couldn't find an affordable copy of the edition that I needed. That is Div Grad Curl and all that, and this technically is not a physics textbook, it is a maths textbook. Now don't go running away, I know maths is scary. But this is a textbook on vector calculus. This is an incredibly important bit of mathematics for any physicist, because you cannot get to the end of a physics degree without studying and using some vector calculus. You're going to need it for electromagnetism, which every physicist has to be able to do, and you're going to be able to do it for fluids, which isn't required for a physics degree, but I highly recommend it. It's really interesting. And a lot of people will study fluids as part of their degree. Vector calculus is an area that covers how vector fields work and looking at sources, sinks, the flux of fields through different surfaces. It's really useful everywhere in physics and you need to be able to understand it. Now, I was quite lucky. I had a really good maths or physicist lecturer and he had a very good set of notes that I found very useful. However, not always the most accessible thing for me. So like with many of my topics, I've turned to a textbook. Divgrad Curl and all that is a really accessible textbook and I maintain it is the reason that I got a good grade in my maths for physicist module in third year and my electromagnetism module honestly saved my year and probably saved my degree. I didn't use it too much in the first semester of my fourth year, but then I went back to it just to refresh my knowledge of vector calculus before taking on a fluids module. And that was a good move because fluids, a lot of the time using vector fields, vector calculus, very, very important. Highly recommend. It's probably gonna be in your university library, but there aren't that many differences between the first, second, third or fourth editions. Vector calculus hasn't changed that much, so, Pick up the copy you can find, pick it up secondhand, and it will serve you well. And my final book that I'm going to talk about in this video is another astronomy textbook. It is Extragalactic Astronomy and Cosmology by Schneider. This book is probably 
my favorite textbook I've ever used. And it's not for my favorite topic, to be honest. I, I find extragalactic astronomy and I find cosmology interesting, but they're not they're not my cup of tea. They're highly observational and yeah, they're interesting, but they're not what I find the most fascinating. This textbook though, so good. Like many of the other really good textbooks I've talked about, it's written in relatively plain English, making it quite easy to read. You're not trying to work out what does this academic nonsense mean. It also explains things from a conceptual level before bringing in any mathematics. This is great because when you're dealing with cosmology, things can get a bit weird pretty quickly. So being able to explain it conceptually before you bring in any maths is really helpful. The book covers everything from how we observe extragalactic objects to the physics that's going on and how we know that, how we can infer that from observations. There's also this dive into cosmology and the evolution of the universe in a way that I hadn't seen before, and it really helped solidify my understanding when combined with the lectures that I was taking at the time I was reading this. It was recommended along with my lecture course, and I can see why. The book also strikes the balance well between the physical concepts that are going on out in the universe and the observations that we use to find that out. I've said before, and I'll say it again, I much prefer the physics and simulation side to observations. I'm not an observer. I prefer to take the laws of physics and try and reproduce observations or see what's going on in a bit we can't see. So while the observations bit wasn't my cup of tea, a lot of books can lean more heavily that way. This explains the astrophysics, the physical processes going on in a nice balance and I really appreciated that. Now obviously I've used this book extensively when studying for extragalactic astronomy. Shock horror. But it's a book I've actually come back to when looking at the physics of nebulae and stars or observational astronomy because there's a lot of stuff in there that's very useful. Like I said, I'm not the most observationally minded, but everyone needs to understand how observations work to do a degree in astrophysics. So being able to check some of the information in there was really valuable when I came back to that module. I'm really glad I bought this book and it wasn't too expensive. None of the books that I've, that I've got here are very expensive. I bought all of them secondhand, literally all of them or I haven't bought them at all because they're in the library. Buying academic books can be kind of expensive, so check out the secondhand marketplaces. But these books, I highly recommend. I've used them extensively through my last four years. They are kind of the most broad books that I have tried and liked. But make sure to get subscribed and hit the bell icon because I'm going to be making a follow-up video in a few weeks' time talking about some of the more niche books that I've used. Things that are exclusively honours level and there's a few more astrophysics books in there but the ones that I like that don't necessarily appeal to everyone. So thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, like, drop a comment down below. And like I said, get subscribed so you don't miss those future videos. Um, if you have any questions about university, drop them in the comment section below. I'm going to do a QA and a in a few weeks time. So make sure to get subscribed for that. All that I have left to say now is thank you very much for watching. If you're looking for something else to watch, check out one of the videos here. One of them was chosen by me. One of them was chosen by YouTube. And I hope you have a very good rest of your day. See ya.